All right, Blender family, before we get into this tutorial, I wanna take just 10 seconds and share with you something that I'm super passionate about. I put together something for you which is called the Ultimate Blender Guide. You can see I'm so excited I can't even talk anymore. And this course is basically, if you wanna learn Blender and you want it all in one place, this course is awesome. Click the link down below. You're gonna have a special link to access the page where the course is at, and you could check it out. It has tons and tons of value, hours of content, and I'm just super excited for you to get a hold of this. So check it out, click the link below, and now enjoy your tutorial. Au revoir. All right, ladies and gentlemen, in this tutorial, we're gonna check out something pretty cool. We're gonna take a look at shape keys in conjunction with sculpting. So what this is gonna allow for us to do is to change our mesh, or our object into something completely different. For example, in this one, we're gonna change our dog into a more demonic looking type dog. You can use this to change a human head into a werewolf, or really any object into any other object. So, we're gonna take a look at shape keys and a little bit of the sculpting and how to use those two together to animate some change in our character. Pretty cool. Now, this model is a model of a dog. Uh, it's actually a model of my Golden Retriever Max, who I lost last year, unfortunately, but uh, cool model, feel free to use it. It should be down in the description below. One thing to keep in mind, he has no bottoms. <laughs> so if you're looking for a dog with a tail, this isn't the one for you, but feel free to use it. And with that, let's jump right to it. First thing I'm gonna do is go to the Modifiers tab. And the thing that I wanna do is, if you can see if I hit Tab to go into Edit Mode, we have a certain amount of vertices to play with. Now, depending on what you're using this project for, you're gonna be doing different things. So, if you're gonna be animating it, you might wanna keep it like this and not apply the subsurf modifier. However, I want a little more geometry to play with during the sculpting, so I'm gonna apply the subsurface modifier. Keep in mind, the more uh, geometry you have, the more detail you could add during the sculpting, but also the less animatable it will be. So. Hitting tab to go back into object mode, I'm gonna apply the subsurf modifier to here and now we can see that I have a lot more geometry to play around with. All right, now let's go to the vertex or the data tab right here, which is this little triangle with the Bermuda, the Bermuda triangle. I'm trying to find my words now. <laughs> now I'm gonna delete the UV maps here. I don't know why that's here. And now we're gonna add a shape key. Now shape keys, if you're not familiar, just a very brief rundown. Shape keys allow for you to animate your character, or whatever mesh you have, in edit mode. So for example, right now I could animate this in object mode, grab it, rotate it, etc. But what if I wanna animate this to where like part of his ear starts sticking out like that? Well, that's what shape keys are for, and they're also used for facial expression and movement such as the eyes moving and the smile of the mouth and all of that, which I might do a tutorial on a little bit later. The basis shape key is basically the original uh, shape of your mesh, so basis will be like this. This is how it will look with the basis shape key. To make changes, all we have to do is add a new shape key, and it's on this shape key that our dog will be changing. Let's name this to demonic dog. And now all we have to do is basically increase the value right here all the way to one. Now, if we go ahead and make any changes in edit mode to our mesh or sculpting, it will basically apply that to this value. And when it's at one, it will have that change applied. And when it's at zero, it will be back at the basis. So instead of trying to explain that to you, because that might sound confusing, let's see it in action. So making sure that the value is at one, let's go to sculpt mode by clicking down here on object mode and going to sculpt mode. And then hitting the T key to bring up our properties. Now, if you're not familiar with sculpt mode, uh, check out my other tutorial on sculpting. It goes uh, through a complete rundown of it, but just a very brief rundown in about 10 seconds. Are you guys timing me? All right, nine. Eight, um, <laughs> sculpt mode has a lot of different options. You have all kinds of different brushes right here. Uh, you have the radius uh, option here, the strength, and the add or subtract button here. And this is what you're gonna be using for the most part. All right, hopefully that was under 10 seconds. <laughs> now, one thing we wanna do is go to symmetry lock, and we actually want to mirror this 
And I believe for the dog, it's actually on the Z axis that it's mirrored for it to be mirroring on both sides as you can see. All right, cool. So now just going in here, I'm just gonna quickly uh, change this up a bit. Now, obviously you could go in here and sculpt it to your heart's content. Uh, I'm gonna do it relatively fast to keep the tutorial short because this isn't necessarily a sculpt me sculpting my dog tutorial. <laughs> but let's go ahead. If you hit the F key, that's actually the shortcut for the size of your brush. So we could just go in here, start changing it up a bit and just kind of, I mean, already anything that you draw on top of a dog will kind of look demonic <laughs> for the most part. I mean, because, all right, now we're going to take a look at another sh little shortcut key here. And that is if you hold down the shift key, it will switch to the smooth brush. So if you hit hold down shift, you could actually smooth out your mesh very, very easily. And then the control key will actually do the opposite. So instead of adding it, it will then subtract your, uh, your sculpting. So you could hold down control to subtract it instead of adding it. All right, cool. And then just kind of draw on your mesh, uh, change it up a bit. Let's check out another brush very quickly, the blob brush. I was gonna say the blob tool. I'm trying to find my word. All right, the blob brush, basically as the name implies, adds a blob. Another shortcut key is if you hit Shift F, this is the strength of your brush. So all the way down into the middle, it's all the way at a strength at one, all the way out to the, to the outer circle is a strength of zero. So you could quickly increase your strength with Shift F or your uh, radius with the F key. And then hitting Shift to smooth that out. Switching back to the Sculpt Draw brush, you could just go in here. And again, I'm just gonna do a couple more, a little bit more over here, and then we'll be good to go. So just, just follow along. Hopefully you got the exact same sculpt that I have right here. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. You don't have to have the exact same brush strokes that I have. All right, let's take a look at two more brushes very, very quickly. One of them being the grab brush. So this one allows for you to grab your mesh as the name implies. So we could go ahead and frown this down so that he looks very evil. I feel kind of bad. <laughs> Max was such a sweet dog and now I'm just making him into a demon. This is not the way. <laughs> this is not a good way to remember him. Definitely not at all. I'm sorry, Max. <laughs> all right. And then another brush that we could take a look at, which I love is the crease brush. I love this brush. So the crease brush basically allows for you to crease the parts of your mesh and you can hold down control once again to crease in the other direction. So creasing inwards and you could crease the mountain part of the mesh or the top. All right, cool. Now I'm just gonna add one more thing right here and then I'll be done. Like I said, once again, I don't wanna, I don't want this to be, whoa, that looks kind of weird. I don't want this to be uh, Alex sculpting his sweet little dog into a demonic dog <laughs> video over here. I just want to show you very quickly. And again, I want to make it quick. That's why I don't want this to be too long. All right, so that will be good for now. And one more there and there. All right, cool. So that will be good for now. Uh, feel free to add more detail or change it up even more. But that's, like I said, that's good for me. I don't want this tutorial to be too long. But again, check out my sculpting tutorial if you'd like to see more of the brushes and how to use them and what to do and all of that beautiful stuff. All right, let's go to uh, back to object mode. I'm too excited. I'm stumbling on my words. And now if we go to this shape key right here, if we turn the value down to zero, it's sweet little Max. And then one, I don't even know who that is. <laughs> it's a demonic type dog. Very, very evil looking. All right. So that's basically how you would um, 
Use shape keys with sculpting to change your mesh into whatever you'd like it to look like. Now again, you could spend more time sculpting and the more vertices that you have in your mesh, the more um, the more you could sculpt it with. Also, another thing to keep in mind, if you hit tab to go into edit mode, make sure that this value is at one, but if you hit tab to go into edit mode, you can also, all right, so if you go into edit mode as well, and with the value all the way at one, you could also grab vertices individually, and if you bring them out, or do whatever changes on them, you could see that it is now part of that shape key as well. So keep that in mind, you could either use sculpting or go in here manually select them and even turn on proportional editing by going on down, down here and clicking on enable and then grabbing it with the G key. And then this will give you a smoother fall off. It's actually so, so increased that here, I need to scroll my mouse wheel in because the proportional editing fall off is all the way, all the way increased. And then make sure to change it to smooth as well. So if you grab this, you can then hit the G key and grab it and basically move this around as you wish and edit it in that way as well. So those are two options that you can use, either edit mode or sculpt mode. I find sculpt mode to be a lot easier uh, personally. And another thing, last thing to keep in mind, you could also, well, let's do two more things actually. You could animate this value. So going to frame one, I'm gonna increase the end frame a bit so that we have some frames to play with. I'm gonna go to value of zero on frame one and hit the I key with the, my mouse hovered over this. How cool is that? I don't know if you knew, but you could animate values. So very, very cool. Yes, you can animate this value. Let's go to frame 20, increase this all the way to one, and then hit the I key once again, and now it's inserted a keyframe. So if we go to the beginning of our animation and hit Alt-A, you can see that it plays our animation. Pretty cool. So now I could even have this looping back and forth. And then another thing you could do as well, which will add, which will make it a lot slower, but you could definitely go to the modifiers and add a subdivision surface modifier to smooth it out. But now you're starting to get into uh, a lot of vertices and geometry. And you can see if I hit Alt-A, it's now playing very, very slowly. So once again, depending on if you're going to animate your character, uh, just make sure to have the proper amount of vertices because like I said, right now with this amount of vertices, this, this might be acceptable. Uh, any more than this, it would be a little bit hard. Even this is a bit much, but any more than this would be a bit hard to start using, you know, bones and rigging your object to animate it. So just keep that in mind. But once again, that is how you use shape keys with sculpting. All right, awesome job, very well done. And of course you could animate the value, not all the way up, but, um, and one last thing I wanna show you as well. I keep thinking we're done, but there's one more thing I wanna show you. These two other options on the maximum and minimum, you could increase this. So if you say two, you can now increase this even more and it will give it even more of a dramatic effect. Now, obviously that's way too much, but I'm just showing you what you could do with it. And if you put the minimum value to negative one, you could then go in the opposite direction, which will basically, <laughs> it will bring it inwards in the opposite direction of where it was going before. So instead of going out, it's now going inwards. So just two other options that you could play around with to increase the minimum and maximum value to get more range of motion with the editing that you did in the sculpting mode. All right, cool, I'll see you soon. Ciao for now, very well done. And also, click the link below, check out the course I put together for you. I'm super excited, I mean, I put my heart, my soul into this. Days, nights, months put into this. I haven't slept some days to put this together for you, but I know you're gonna get tons of value. If you wanna learn Blender and if you want it all in one place, Click the link below, check out this course. It's a special link, especially for you watching this video. And uh, I think you're gonna love it. So check it out, it's the ultimate blender course. And uh, once again, check it out, it's super awesome. I'm excited for you to get a hold of it. So with that, ciao for now, au revoir. I'll see you in the next tutorial. All right, appreciate you. 
Let me know if you need anything, I'm here to help. Please like this video, subscribe, and comment. I'll see you, ne I'll see you next time, ciao. All right, so I decided to do a little time lapse of this because I thought you guys might enjoy it and I wanna give you all that I can. So here it is if you'd like to see just a little bit more of the sculpting that I did. So just using mainly the draw brush here, I'm kind of drawing in some crevices and raises a little bit all over. Of course, giving him some ribs. He needs some ribs over here. <laughs> and then just drawing a little bit here and there, just getting a feel for it. Uh, and then here using the snake hook tool to bring out the horns, make him a little more devilish looking. And then here, just giving him a pedicure, you know, doing his nails, uh, <laughs> adding in some detail right there. And then, of course, all over the body a little bit, um, give him more of a demonic kind of look and feel. So again, just using the smooth tool. Uh, the smooth brush, the draw brush, and the grab and snake hook brush here. Of course, adding in some spine to it definitely adds to the creepiness of it. And the fact that he doesn't have a bottom, that definitely, <laughs> that adds some creepiness to it for sure as well. So that's pretty much it. All right, ciao.